what took place yesterday is clearly linked to a terrorist ideology. And uh, that's why uh, we are offering the support of the NCMP in uh, the ongoing investigation. Hmm. What do we say? Uh, a young man who was willing to fight for this country, defend you, me, Canada, is dead, another injured, uh, because someone, in the name of his faith, the religion to which he converted, knocked them down in a car, tried to kill them, had a knife. We can only assume he, he then intended to gut them, cut off their head. Robert Spencer began the, 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 the website Jihad Watch. Uh, for many years, he's been warning us of what will happen, what has happened. He has been attacked for that, abused, insulted, threatened, had speeches cancelled, not by Muslims, by people who are meant to be on our side. He joins us now, as always, from a location we don't give out the address because, well, you know why we don't give out the address. Robert, I, I, I've already asked an expert this subject. It, it's really a rhetorical question, but are you surprised? Oh, no, not in the least. This is something the Islamic State called for. And this Ahmed Rouleau, he uh, is clearly a fan of the Islamic State. He wanted to join the Islamic State. And so when the Islamic State said, uh, do what you can at your own, in your own countries, uh, creating mayhem and uh, murder in whatever way you can, including using your vehicle as a weapon, then he took it seriously. Clearly, he read that and he followed the instructions to the letter. I understand that. I mean, you, you know me, we know each other quite well. You know I understand what is behind all of this. But for someone who converts to, to the religion, who's grown up in, in a country, in Canada, in, in Quebec, in French-Canadian society, which is fairly close-knit, and then just wants to kill people he has been in community with, it's one thing to be radical and call for foreign wars, but to murder your own and want to murder your own, that's what I just I can't quite understand. It's taught in the Quran, Michael. It's an unfortunate fact, but it's true. In chapter 60, verse 4 of the Quran, Abraham is held up as an excellent example to be imitated by the believers when he tells his family that there will be enmity and hatred between us and you forever because you don't believe in Allah. And so that enmity and hatred, even to one's family members, is held up as something that Muslims should emulate. And no doubt, obviously, Ahmed Rulo was taught that. He's not by any means the first convert to Islam that we have seen turn against his own people, his own nation, his own family. That was Sergeant Hassan Akbar, an American soldier who murdered several of his commanding officers in Kuwait about 11 years ago. And, of course, there was, uh, uh, there was the shooting in Little Rock of the uh, Army recruiting uh, officers outside a recruiting center by a convert to Islam, an American who uh, suddenly believed that the military of his own country, just like Ahmed Rouleau clearly believed, were now the enemy because he had converted. And nothing is being done in the mosque to teach converts that they should not take up these attitudes. Which leads to the question, and it's a central question, it's a tough question, and it's a question that most people will not ask in media. Is there something intrinsic in the Quranic teaching, in the teachings and instructions of the Hadith and in Islamic history, that, that leads to people who are not fanatics, who are not extremists, but are simply Muslim, that leads them to believe that one way or the other they <laughs> have to conquer those who do not follow them. They have to impose their will on others. Now, quite clearly, there are many people born Muslim who, don't, who do not believe this. But we have to ask, are they the people who are the heretics within Islam? Is an orthodox Muslim required, even in a non-violent way, to impose his or her will on the non-believer? The one thing I can tell you, Michael, is that many Muslims do believe that. And we have seen Muslims act upon it. Muslims who had no contact with so-called extremist groups, no contact with al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, whatever, you take, for example, Mohammed Reza Tahiri Azhar, who was a North Carolina student at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill uh, five or six years ago. He read the Quran. He just wanted to become more religious. He was tired of living as a libertine. And so he decided to recover his religious tradition. He read the Quran, and he realized that he had a responsibility to wage war against unbelievers. He rented an SUV, drove it onto campus, tried to kill, run down as many students as possible, just like Martin Rouleau used his vehicle as a weapon. He didn't end up killing anyone. He injured nine students. But the point was, he made it very clear in detailed letters afterwards. He was inspired by nothing but reading the Quran. This is something that moderate Muslim leaders, that Muslims who profess to reject jihad violence, ought to be working actively to prevent and instituting programs in mosques and Islamic schools to teach against this understanding of Islam that they ostensibly reject, or 
whether or not they really reject it, it's going to have to be placed into question. But well, this is the point, because obviously there are many Muslims who read the Quran who are devoted to its teachings who do not act thus. They're not violent. They don't want to kill people. Are those people and their leaders, are they brave enough and committed enough, genuinely, to, to a peaceful interpretation of Islam to make sure that fanaticism is controlled? Because we know that, if anything, the, the, the dominant feature of Islam amongst younger people today is, is not a pacific teaching. It, it is potentially very violent. Quite right. And we haven't seen it. You know, Michael, one of the things that I see working on Jihad Watch every day uh, is pretty much every day, there is some non-Muslim writer saying, it's time for the moderates to step up. We're going to have to start hearing from the moderate Muslim community. I've seen hundreds of articles saying this over the last 11 years. And what did we have? We do not have any significant movement among Muslims to fight against jihad terror and Islamic supremacism. And that's very telling. How long are we going to sit on our hands and wait? How long before we say there is one law for the citizens of Canada, one law for the citizens of the United States, and all of the citizens of the country are expected to obey those laws without trying to set up a parallel society or to subvert the laws and, and principles of the existing society? Well. In, in, obviously, you're in the United States, but the leader of uh, what is effectively the opposition, it's not officially, but it is the effective opposition, the leader of the Liberal Party, Justin Trudeau, who may well be the next Prime Minister. Now, he's changed his tune a bit, but at one point he said uh, uh, about removing passports from people who've gone abroad to fight for Islamic terror, he said that uh, I think a lot of Canadians, including very conservative Canadians, should be worried about the state willing to take the power to remove citizenship from people. That's a slippery slope. What he was saying was we shouldn't create second-class, two-tier citizenship. Now, again, he's been pushed into a bit of a corner now, so he's beginning to reverse his position. But he was applauded for saying, you can't take away the passports. You can't take away the citizenship of people just because they go abroad and start beheading innocent people in the name of Islam. Well, I think we must. The Islamic State is at war with Canada. It has declared itself at war with Canada. Those people who go to fight for there are committing treason. Why on earth should they be granted all the rights and privileges of citizens when by the very act of going over to fight with the Islamic State, they are declaring that they want to see Canada destroyed? Mm. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a battle that's only beginning in a war that has hardly started. I, I wish I didn't have to say this. I, I have children. I don't want them to, to, to have to live in a world where there's so much division and potential conflict. But it, it's extremely worrying. And what is most worrying, in a way, is not so much that we have these problems. It's that there are so few people in the West who are willing to stand up in a moderate way, not in a racist way or a blanketing way, but merely say there is a conflict, there is a culture war going on, and we have to stand firm. But there's so much cowardice and denial. It is nothing but cowardice and denial, Michael, with very few exceptions. Your show is one of them, and there are just a very few people out there who are shining the light in an ever-encroaching darkness. And the problem is, is that the lo as long as our politicians pretend that things are not as they are, pretend that the Islamic yeah. state is not Islamic, pretend there's nothing going on in mosque stateside and in Canada, they're just postponing the problem, and it's only going to get worse yeah. when they eventually will have to deal. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Robert, uh, as always, uh, thank goodness you're there, and you'll always be welcome on this show. Thank you very much. Thank you.